part 8. The hammer and the trigger and a little bit about the stock. This you may watch. Same old story. Bolt goes back. It's easy to drag it over the hammer even with spring force acting against me. You can see it rides over. Kind of the angle is going into a to a kind of sharp corner. Follow the curve here, go back. On the way in again. Press the hammer down. But it's actually harder to close the gun than open the gun. Twice as much force at least required. That tells me we have to change the angles. Decision, decision, decision. You have to choose. Don't dwell. Do or don't. We do. Err. I say twice as hard to close than open. Is it the angle or is it a physical law that tells me if I press this way, the spring is here, easy. If I try to press that way, it's, it's not the way the spring is, the, the hammer is going, so I have to press it down to get it back. Here, I press it back. So my, uh, my guessing is kind of wrong, but I take the angle anyway to see if I can smoothen it up and no way back or I have to dig out my old welder or new welder, TIG, MIG, whatever I want. <clears throat> it's good to think things over before you make your decision. Sometimes the road ends in a dead end. In this case, pressing back is easy. Try to press it like this, it won't go down. Press it straight down, goes down. Tells me the Marlin angle is like this. I think I beat Marlin. I will go like this and try to have it kind of flat and see if I can get a kind of match between the bolt and the hammer but I will take a little away here but I won't come up in an angle like that because I run into a brick try to run straight into a wall see what happens I try to go easy I have a scribe mark I will try to follow And then I will try it before I go any further like this. That's the stop button. Almost equal force required back and forth. It was a um, good advice to advise myself. I will, I have to look at the cam, try to run the pencil down here, there you can see a sharp thing, I will round that, I also can try to move my line a little forward, then it starts to get scary, see what I am doing, but we are on the right track my friends, and on the others, oh, on the, you can see the rub marks maybe, here. Good. Hope I'm not carried away. See what happens. Easy. Easy. Goes easy, easy over on the back stroke. You can see the two lines follows. When I go back up again. Two angled surfaces pressing down over. This is kind of okay. Um, the hammer looks like this. And we are going from grinder to stones to smoothen up things. Okay, 
and started with this uh, Norton stone, oil stone, stone here up a little bit. Then I changed to the Lansky 600 grit stone, stone myself like this up here round the sharpest edge, followed by try to get the lines in this direction, push it, take some time, but I'm going to assemble it in the gun for a trial fit, see what happens. So far, so good, I think. Here you can see the approximately curves. We're going to glue it and assemble it. When I drag the hammer back with the bolt and when it pass over here, I can if I close my eyes, I can't see I can't say that the bolt rides over the hammer. Uh, it's impossible. So that is very good. Not more force required than pressing the hammer down by the spring force. Uh, on the way back, it also is very good, but I think that this angle here is a little steep. Uh, the reason I think that it's very, it's very actually very easy to close it. Uh, easier this way, but it is easy. Uh, but when I try to cycle it fast, like shooting, it goes over real smooth, but I get a little dipping in the gun because of the sudden bump. So my theory go easier, not that steep angle. And this is not a steep angle, it's better. If I'm going to shoot something, need a follow-up shot, I don't want that gun to dip down or something if I don't do it myself. I like to go, I like to keep my side, side picture. So I will see what I can do about the angle and I stop when I come too far. Now it is incredible smooth also on the forward stroke. It's, I'm very satisfied. The gun doesn't dip while cycling slow or fast and this is with a stiff original spring I haven't tried for example the Brownell springs and this is it this is only stone it's not honed I'm gonna hone it look a little bit on the surface under here but basically this made me happy for sure the bolt got a little massage honing stone and a little buffing with the buffing wheel um, the same goes for the hammer and then it's a closed deal. Ah, this is something else, completely smooth. Very good. Um, for right now, I can't do it any better. So we have to change focus to something else. Okay, we are going to work ourselves backwards in time again. Remember, the sear rests here in the full cock notch. When you pull the trigger, you release the sear and it walks up here. It's supposed to clear this edge, the half cock notch. And guess what? It hits, you can see. It's a shiny spot, meaning it actually hits here, bumps over and rides here. Do I want my newly stoned edge to uh, be banged up? No, I don't. I stone it, grind it, whatever. Will the sear clear the hammer, meaning not bumping into it? Rubbing against it is okay. Started with a grinder. Some diamond laps, some uh, stones, honing, and it came out like this. Uh, even in the groove here, I took this knife with some emery paper on it and worked it back and forth 
in the slot in the half cock slot so if there are some burrs and I could feel them clearly on the sides here and a little bit inside because it rubs my paper it gets hole in the paper meaning something is sticking up uh, I don't think this is something that you know is necessary but when I'm finished with my sear and full cock notch I don't want anything to ruin my surfaces uh, that's the main reason do you see this rub mark what do you think it's from it's from the sear rubbing the hammer yes it is but have I pulled the trigger and released the hammer no sir haven't this is just cycling the action in a normal manner finger not touching trigger just cycling five six seven times and there will always be rubbing marks because the sear here has a spring force acting that way so it kind of follow this curve jumps down here and goes into full cock notch if I want to but it basically rides along here down here without doing any trigger pull so that's a reason it can be red marks but that is not the action the, re, the reason I did it I could I could actually feel the sear bumping my hammer when I pull the trigger we can see what happens now and know for sure there may be visitors here is the rub mark I have cocked the hammer and pulled the trigger at the same time so for sure it doesn't contact the hammer make a trigger pull 10 times approximately and we see it sitting but it's good for now because it doesn't hit the sharp edge here down here the sharp edge that is like here there was a angled or beveled surface it hit straight in that surface and bumped up and that I don't like try to bang a couple of hammers against each other no 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 but this I can live with because I don't feel doing any more work on this thing when you think you know it all guess what you lose there is always something new to learn if this is your baseline you are learning something completely new, it's zero, you know nothing. May go like this, may go like this. At some point it will start to flatten. Especially if it flattens down here. When you just know a little about it, you think you know it all. Oh, this is easy. Go up here, it's hard, easier, hard, easier. Oh, it's easy, ha! Huh. I know it all, you know nothing, my friend. And here? It actually can start to go downhill if you don't bother. But say it goes like this. You will, it will be slow, slow, slow. But you will always learn. And if you look hard enough, things become more difficult. Everything becomes difficult. You know nothing. Okay, you have to learn more. Up here, you're a professor. And you still don't know it all. You don't know it all. Okay, be curious, curiosity. And another thing is you gunsmiths and uh, trigger buffs. You have probably been jumping up and down in your chairs for a while now after uh, hearing me speaking about triggers. <laughs> um, I say uh, the uh, loose fit uh, between trigger and hammer doesn't matter doesn't matter because I can't do anything about it best is tight tolerances and no slop of course it is but this is what I have uh, 
here in the receiver. The screw is very sloppy. Here, ha, for the trick. Here it is very sloppy. In the hammer, very sloppy. This is sloppy. If you are going to tighten something up, we don't know the relationships between these two holes. If they are angled one way or the other, if you knew they were parallel, we could tighten up triggers here and hammer, but we don't know that. We can assume that. I can't find out, no problem, but assume we don't know. There is an easy thing, you can line the hammer. And this will align after the hammer. You have to stone the notch if you have stoned it before. You can bore out this hole and you can press in a buzzing and you can hone it to fit your pin. But it will also be loose here. I don't know if this hole is bigger than that hole or what it is. But you can, if you have access to a lathe or a friend's lathe, Make yourself a bigger screw, make it to fit that hole. If that hole is bigger, make a step in the screw fitting that hole. When it fits that hole, that hole is smaller, the screw won't go through here. Hone it up, don't use a drill bit, you will ruin it for sure, it will dig in. Uh, hone it with uh, like a sun and hone with a mandrel, you know, that can expand. Someone in your neighborhood will have it. I have a couple of them. I need them for Harley Davidson work. It's only honing, honing, honing. But um, that's another story. Okay. But you that jumps in your chairs, let me. Oh, before we talk about that, look. Otherwise, the screw come up. Uh, see how far I can push the hammer back and forth, up and down, sideways. Now we come to the point with you jumping guys. I say I have a safe trigger. <laughs> safe trigger. And you say you have a safe trigger. You can pull the trigger and release it halfway in the notch and I'm not going to shoot, uh, release it, bang it to, uh, to the ground and shoot the head out of myself, of myself or if I borrow the gun to someone, that this is actually the most unsafe trigger you have ever seen because it can rest where you where you, um, where, where, if you don't pull it anymore, that's a very, very, very dangerous situation. It's a definitely no, 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 no. But I like it and I don't want to borrow it out. Can I fix that? You can, maybe. Maybe it is the spring and the slop that do it, that does kind of strange things so it locks itself. Because when I do like this, just pull it, release it, pull it, release it, it goes back. With the more force on, it won't go back. So it may not be the sloppy thing causing the problem. The thing I think it is, and it's easy to find out. This edge on the sear is very, 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 very sharp. That's not a good thing if it binds. So, if I round that a little bit, will it go back into the groove because there's a spring force here. So when I told you I had it like this and let the hammer go, it landed itself, it went back to the groove. Yes it does because it has a spring. But when it's in the groove, it is safe. The angle the two angles make it safe. So the question is, when you do triggers, 
don't have a creepy feeling that you can rest your trigger in a position, go away, come back a day after, bang it and go, it go down and goes off. So, you know that I know about the problem? If you don't like me having this thing, okay, I can stone it and stone it and show you. It will go, will, will go back and then I can stone it sharp again. Let's see if I bother, but I know about the problem. But if I want to do anything about it, that's another case for another day or later on today. Ah, we. You know, don't need to film anymore. Go play. It was his friend that visited. Ah. And now, awesome drawing by me. Yeah, what's that? You're an artist, my friend. Okay, okay, fellows. Everything for you. I have stoned it again. Break the edge a little, just with ceramic stone, stone, nothing fancy or type of hard grinding. When I grind the notch and hammer, I like to hold the um, stone like this and drag the hammer up and down here. I feel I get the best feeling doing that. Um, this one, I run across the stone also do that side back side squared it a little bit then just barely rounded it and it's not much it's just barely but there is definitely no sharp edges here sharp edges in the corner here but not very sharp I can feel them where they are sharp but I think they will move over the hand this here will move over so let's see what we are up to. You made me do it, didn't you? My two stage feeling is gone. Very crisp, but it's let go. I think it's the same weight. I haven't tried, but approximately, but I can't. Stop and make a second guess, press it. But what I can do is press it a little bit, let go of it, and it snaps back. That I can do. I don't know if I can. I can do. There is no creep whatsoever. Let go at once and breaks like glass. So, that's okay. We have to try it on the scale. You don't have a reason to be happy as long as you are. But if you have reason to be sad, you don't have to be sad. It didn't make me happy. I'm not sad. But I like the two-stage feeling. It's not a two-stage, but just, you know, just to call it something. But this? Oh yeah, I can live with it. That's not a problem. I can even cycle it. Oh. This one. And I will roam these corners because when you snap your finger, when you try to be quicker than you are, uh, it hurts. But we'll try the scale very, very, very quick. You know, I am. This gun starts to bother me. I I have a feeling I want to I want to throw it into the locker and close the door. So I've never been near coming that far and I I am no with a gun if it if it hasn't been for the video. And when the stock come off, guess what? There is a round hole. That thing tank is going to go in the hole and this file for sure is going to go in here. I'm not going to bore it up but I can see red marks lower side upper side from this one. So doesn't matter but I like it free floating and my scale will tell me if 
open it. The rope, I should have hanged myself in this rope instead. I do so much silly things. Now, that was a bad statement. I've never had any intention about taking my life or hang myself. It's only for losers. That is for sure. Uh, so you even don't want to joke with it. S sorry, pal. Uh, can you see the digits? No. It's too bright. No. Okay. Breaks Let's three. easier. Let's say three. And it's dry, dry, dry. No oil. There is no oil in the gun whatsoever. So. Okay, let's say it breaks. It's I'm very satisfied. And um, Terry. thank you guys. Made me do this. Uh, trigger is good. Good, good, good. Can be better. Everything in life can be better. Strive to get things better. When something goes out, uh, is it my fault? Of course not. It's always other people's fault or thing that you don't control. That's the reason things doesn't function. It's not me. I think we are screwed together like that. But anyways, my bolt, um, it's cracked. Doesn't work. Is it me? No, for sure not. Um, if you can zoom a little bit here on the bolt, you can see it is cracked here all the way around down until here. Stays out in a little angle. Is it me with all the filing and the rotary files? Don't think so. When we started, one, one place in the, in, the, in the video I told there is a little bug here, I'm going to file it away, I didn't do that. Uh, and the bolt looked like... Uh, looked like... This. Before, left side, right side from above. It was very thin here. I assume... It's supposed to be like this. And I think the casting is not within spec. So it's here, thin hair. It's just, it's almost nothing. So when I banged it back and forth or whatever happened, it cracked. We say it's not me. I say I want a new bolt. It's a warranty. And I will show you to show it to all you people and you can be my judge. You can blame me, doesn't matter as long as I get a new bolt. But anyways, it's gone. Bye bye. Can't use you anymore. That is part of the life. Go down. Can't do anything about it. So we start on something Back in new. The video. Yeah, one more thing. When did I discover this thing? Uh, I haven't worked with a gun for two weeks. Uh, get a little bored. But I saw this stone. I've seen it before. Fit into into here. And I thought, oh, you are smooth. I know that for sure. What happens if I use this one? It fits exactly down here. So. I went like this, back and forth, back and forth, and I could feel it was hanging up here. Yeah, I know, I doesn't care about the phone, just... Uh, then, that what was the point I discovered it. But, when we are talking about stones, this is Brownells MF724 Knife Indiana Stone, medium fine. This width fits exactly in here. It's a little wedge shape. So Brownells, listen up. If you make one of these in ceramic stone, you can sell a set that is dedicated for Marlin bolts. We people like to be fooled. So we say, oh, I need that one and we buy it. You will make money. I may be happy, I don't know. But a ceramic stone to really smoothen things up is a good thing. Bye. Okay. The trigger. Triggers, triggers, triggers. Why is it a two-piece design and not a one-piece design? 
why do we need a two-piece? How come? Uh, I don't know. What did the engineers or the staff do? Um, did they do like this? One piece firing pin? Two piece firing pin? And just flip the coin and it says two piece firing pin? Is that what happened? I don't know. I can only guess and I will guess. Um, my guess is if it is a one piece design, if it is, why couldn't it be a one piece? This is definitely more than one piece. If it's I need this one will slide straight through the hole so we've used my famous match again that one won't fall out but I can wiggle it if I have a one piece design it comes down here when I pull the trigger and the famous it can hit here if I have my finger hard here as I'm pulling the hammer falls hits here it has to yeah it will cock itself out my finger will help it will go out but I think the reason there is and my guess there is a two-piece firing pin if it hits here it will bump over or something like that. I think it must be the reason. I think it's the reason. I can't figure out anything else that a two piece can do, a one piece can't. So I think that's why we have a one piece design, two piece design. Um, and enough about that. The genius that made the wedge that goes underneath here, the wedge look like this, this, and from the side, like this, wedge, it, this piece goes over here and under here, the sear goes over. That's so it, you can't lose it. Then it has to extend back here and you will cock the sear forward. Then I thought Ah, if it kicks the sear forward, it has to rest halfway in the notch. So I took a toothpick and shoved it in here, mounted the trigger, and guess what? It went all the way back. The only thing that happened was the trigger was angled a little more forward. So if you do the wedge thing, Make sure you can wiggle this piece a little bit so it can jump over it not if but when it hits here. And if the trigger is a little forward you can file here, here, lower this surface and this one comes further back. But don't touch this part. This part is where this one rides to block the trigger when the latch isn't fully closed. I will try to I will try the wedge but there is also something else. If I bore myself it's more work and if I can do things the hard way I will if I bore one hole here one hole here and if this is your way if the trigger is like this bore two holes there and then I make myself a block of aluminum or something with two pins in and it comes like this here comes the sear I bore and now it's here I bore myself down here and up here for a small spring then it is spring loaded back I've checked this piece 
if it's not very long will clear this pin so it will function then you have a spring loaded trigger or you can bore yourself a hole in here and make yourself a spring out of spring steel and so or something it will press it back if you can't live with the floppy trigger it doesn't bother me at all I don't know I don't think about it I just pull the trigger uh, sometimes it catch my hand maybe it does that when it's here also why not just buy the one piece design from Wild West triggers I say one piece it's not a one piece it's a one piece assembly from Wild West it's a bussing here that's pressed in that holds these two pieces together and there is a spring underneath some, some, somewhere that pressed this one back and it is stoned in a little different angle so you have a crisper trigger if you don't do anything here that's what they have done and that's I never seen it uh, other than in pictures so I assume it's work it works like I say but you know this is what I have and I am uh, my soul I like to know new things so why buy something if I can try to make it to work if I ruin the parts doesn't care then I can buy the Wild West but another thing what is blocking this one going forward it is this hair hits here you may see the hair line here so that is what blocks it from going forward so if you weld on here and but you actually can't weld I think because this is some type of cast part if you weld here you will burn away things I will gamble on it so I won't weld on it but you can use some glue or uh, or or, uh, or some type of uh, of um, yeah some type of glue and you can glue it up here and you can file it down so this won't go any further than this you can block it but we like it to wiggle a little bit and then you have an easy solution also probably I have invented the wheel two three times now because people knows about this and it has for sure been done been been done a lot of times but I haven't seen it uh, that's why I talk about it um, okay and the trigger it sometimes it hits you here in the finger when you are trying to be quicker than you are and that hurts so this is a sharp corner this is a sharp corner if you round the corners here it won't hurt that much it won't be a knife edge but you can see the trigger is also angled a little that way that you need you can only use the trigger because no I can't only use the trigger I need a sear uh, if it is possible to get this part lined up I may be able to and it was not easy this time so you have to watch me wiggle it around here oh. when things bothers you don't don't bother about it do it all over again don't fiddle with it start all over like this and it comes straight through isn't that funny like this okay the trigger sometimes if it goes all the way forward it can hit here if it hits up here it blocks it so it is angled so it can ride smoother over here this is of course press it inwards at the same time but I don't gamble so I will round it a little bit here so it's not that sharp but I will attend this angle that's everything for no and this pin here also blocks the forward motion of the trigger it hits here on the sear it also locks the latch in place
I will just barely hone here, not stone, just smooth it up. This I have honed a little bit so it will be smoother. I did a little honing here, I didn't tell you a while ago where the spring rides, the underside of the spring. That for sure I can't feel before or after and I will hone a little bit under the spring because I can feel it is a little rough. So that's everything for I think I may lie uh, because I told you that a two piece firing pin is so this can bump over when it hits here. I don't think so because it's pressed down here by the spring all the way back so the reason it's a two piece is when it comes down here it's spring loaded forward and when it reaches the full cock notch it snaps into place that's probably the main reason it's a two piece bang come here whatever I do hold the trigger still comes over the edge snaps back whatever I do with the trigger without pulling it of course uh, maybe that maybe that that's what I basically have to tell, tell you I just you know pull about mini with tree yeah I have with a ceramic stone kill someone hold it the okay. surfaces here both sides the spring this hook, I've honed everything here for the trigger, for the hammer and we'll see what happens uh, when I try it and see if I have improved something on the trigger pull. I don't assume so, but I've done it. Triggers. Uh, I have rounded these edges so it doesn't hurt so much when it hit my hand. Uh, and what I haven't done is made myself a new pin to tighten up these things but I ain't going to do that no because no I'm going to oil the gun put it back together so this is everything about triggers okay gun is back together it's oiled and it's time to have a final check for trigger feeling trigger feeling is good what what is the actual weight I used my digital scale, it jumps around when you're trying to figure out when you drag it through. Uh, I measured it like this, three pounds with stock springs. But I came up with a solution, if you take a wire, bend it so it fits the hook and up comes a bottle and you add it water until it breaks and with stock spring it breaks at 3.13 pounds with the Brownells spring I measured two and a half with my bottle 245 pounds with the Wolf I measured two pounds with a bottle 215 so that's the story. This is the actual weight. I doesn't have. I don't have to guess. And when it breaks, I do like this and measure it. Um, yeah. Probably little stock trigger spring, uh, hammer spring. I think I like it. I like so I can fine. Everything's fine. I fell in love. Good guns. Bye for now. I don't want to be here anymore. I'll leave you.